Okay, let me go ahead and uh, record this next video on uh, the topics of patterns and looking for patterns in, uh, in situations that come up in math like division by zero. So uh, we just finished the uh, cube problem. And uh, now we're gonna look at other type of problems that can be solved by looking at patterns. So the first one here is the sum of odd numbers. So somebody might say, well, if you add up all the numbers up to 100, what would you get? Well, that's a very difficult problem. It would take a long time to do, but maybe you could see if there's a pattern in some way uh, to get this. And it's, the ma math is very easy. You can do it with uh, elementary school kids, and the patterns uh, are pretty cool that you see and good for kids to see. So what I did here is I made a table of odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. And then here, I'm going to add up the odd numbers. So um, 1, just 1. Now I'm going up to 3. So adding up these odd numbers, 1 and 3, I get 4. Next number is 5. And adding up these uh, odd numbers, 1, 3, and 5, if you add those up, you get 9. And let's go one more, 7. If you add up these odd numbers, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, you add those up, you get 16. So we can do another, but you might see the pattern here is actually the first odd number added up is one, then four, which is two squared, nine, which is three squared, and 16, which is four squared. So the, the thought is that it's, it's squaring, you're squaring a certain number. So uh, actually, how many odd numbers do we have here? We have two odd numbers, and this is two squared. How many odd numbers do we have here? Three, the first three consecutive odd numbers, and it's three squared, which is nine. So it's the number of odd numbers that you have squared. So here with nine, that's one plus three plus five plus seven plus nine, and that should give us five squared, here I'll write it this way, five squared, five raised to the second power, which is 25, let's check it here. Nine and one is 10, uh, that makes 13, 18, 18 and seven is 25. Now, this one up to 11, that would be 36, right? Six squared, because you have six odd numbers. So the pattern is squaring, we have one squared, which is one and so on. Here you have two odd numbers. Uh, the number of odd numbers, which we have two of them squared, which is four. The number of odd numbers we have going up to five is three and three squared is nine and so on. Four squared is 16, five squared is 25, six squared is 36. So if we were going to need to add the numbers Add the, uh, sorry, add the odd numbers from one to 100. All we really need to know is how many odd numbers do we have going from one to 100? Well, I believe half of them are odd, right? And the other half are even. So if you're going from one to 100, that's 100 numbers, half are odd and half are even. So 50 of them are odd. So we have 50 odd numbers. Unlike if you go to 99, if it was one to 99, then you have an odd number to start off with one and an odd number to end with 99. So there's still 50 odd numbers, but only 49 even numbers. So what we need to do here is just a number of odd numbers up to 100 is uh, 50 of them. It's because we're not adding the 100, we stop at 99. We would be doing one plus three plus five plus seven all the way up to 99. But anyway, there's 50 odd numbers and the pattern is just take the number of odd numbers, I'll insert an equation here, just take the number of odd numbers. And so to go clear up to hundred, there's 50 odd numbers and you just square that. And 50 squared is 2,500. And that would be the answer to that problem. So by the same idea, you could do one to a thousand. Uh, adding up the odd numbers from one to a thousand, there's 500 odd numbers. 500 squared is, I think it's like 250,000 or so. 
But anyway, let's check to see if we can get a pattern with uh, the even number. Sorry, I copied this over and didn't change it to even. So even sum of even numbers. Okay. So first number is two, two. Some of the even numbers up to four be two plus four is six. Some of the even numbers up to six be two plus four plus six, which adds up to 12. Some of the even numbers up to eight, two plus four plus six plus eight, which adds up to 20. And we could keep on going with this, but do we see a pattern here? Well, thinking about this, maybe it has, maybe it does have something to do with squaring like we were easily able to see with the sum of the odd numbers is squaring. So since this is sum of even numbers, it probably has something to do with squaring also. So let's think about this one in terms of one squared, but, but we can see that we also would have to add on, one squared is just one, we'd have to add on one to that. And then here, uh, six, thinking of the previous problem with adding up to sum of odd numbers, that was two squared, right? So let's do two squared, that gives us four, but that has, to, we have to get up to six. So that only gives us four, we need two more. So how about 12? Well, 12, we can think of nine plus three, see the odd one, nine plus three more. So nine is three squared plus three more. So let's look at this pattern here. One squared plus one, two squared plus two, three squared plus three. So we probably think here at this point, this would be four squared plus four. Well, I think it is, right? Um, that would be uh, four squared, sorry, four squared is 16 and 16 plus four gives you 20, which is the sum of the even numbers. So here's our pattern right here. Maybe I should have typed that in over here to be neat with it but it's the number of even numbers that you have squared plus the even numbers. So let's say the same thing. If we were gonna add up, so let me do this. If we were adding up the even numbers from one to 100, well, we got 50 even numbers, okay? 50 even numbers from one to 100. And what it says we're supposed to do by this pattern is, well, let's see it here. We take the number of even numbers that we have, square it and add the number of even numbers back on. So all we do here is take 50, we got 50 even numbers. So we take 50 squared, but we have to add the 50 back on. 50 squared plus 50, is gonna be 2,500 plus 50 more or 2,550. Well, now that we got both the odd numbers and even numbers, we see that that's 2,500 and that's 2,550. I think we can get the sum of not odd or even, just all numbers, sum of all the counting numbers from one to 100. How can we do that? Well, we know what the odd ones are. The odd numbers from one to 100 add up to 2,500. So the odd numbers add up to 2,500. And the even add up to 2,550. So the total of all the numbers added up from one to 100 should be uh, 5,050, and I believe that's right. So we can stay with that right there. Now, could we get a pattern for adding the numbers from one to 100 or from one to any consecutive amount, you know, one, two, three, four, one, one through a 10, one through a hundred, whatever, uh, without having to deal with the odd or the even? Could we just get it done without dealing with just odd or just even, all of them. Well, let's look a pattern individually for adding up consecutive numbers. So for example, here, let's take this down to the next page. So looking at, at adding up consecutive numbers, 
if we have one plus two plus three plus four, let's just add those consecutive numbers right there. Well, we can add them you know, by hand and do one plus two is three, three plus three is six, and six plus four is 10. But that's a very time consuming way, especially if we're going out to let's say 100 or 200 or 1000, you don't wanna to have to do one number at a time. We wanna look for a pattern on that, just like we did with the odd and the even. Well, what I did here was I added the end ones together. Like I looked at one plus four, the farthest out ones, one plus four, and then I did two plus three. And the reason I did that is because if I do the outer ones and the inner ones, I keep getting the same amount because I go one higher and one lower. So we see one plus four is five, two plus three is five. So I have two groups of five and two times five is 10. And it works, you can add them up. Let's take a look at the first six numbers. Consecutive numbers added up, one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. So again, I'll go on the outer ones and work my way in. I'll do one plus six, two plus five, and three plus four. Each one of these is seven, and I have three groups of seven. So now I have three times seven, or in other words, 21. And I don't care too much about what it is. I care about how I'm getting it, the pattern here. This is three times seven. This one is, what, two times five. So let's take a look at another one to see if we can get this pattern down. So now I'm adding up all the numbers from one to eight. And again, I'll group them in this way, one plus eight, two plus seven, you know, one higher, one lower. So they always add up to the same amount. So one plus eight, two plus seven, three plus six, four plus five. Each one of these add up to nine and I have four groups of nine. And four times nine is 36 but maybe we see a pattern here. See, with the first four numbers, it was two groups of five. And then look, next six numbers, we've got six numbers, it's three groups of seven. So you went two, three, four. Then here it went five, seven, nine. So probably if we go out to 10, and I'll do one more before we go out to 100, but if we went out to 10, and um, we'll do it here. So recording this ahead of time saves a lot of time because I don't have to uh, type it all up while in class, but finishing this off here, plus nine, plus 10, adding up the outermost ones, it'd be one plus 10, two plus nine, three plus, eight, four plus seven, and keep going here, plus, let's see what we have left, five plus six. I think that's all of them there, working our way towards the middle. So what do we have? That's 11, two and nine's 11, three and eight's 11, four and seven's 11, five and six and 11. How many groups of 11 do we have? One, two, three, four, five. We have five groups of 11, and that would be 55. So it does work here. Two, three, four, five is the number of groups that we have. What do the groups add up to? This one, five, this one, seven, nine, this one, 11. Five, seven, nine, 11. So to get up to 100, we just got to see it's going to be so many groups of so many. So let's see if we can figure this out. One plus two plus three, all the way up to a uh, hundred. Well, how many groups would we have? It would be, you know, like for example, what the first one would be one plus 101. Sorry, one plus 100, right? And the next one would be two plus 99. And the next, you get the idea, would be three plus 98. And we keep on going until we get in the very, very middle of this, plus a good many, until we get right in the middle. And I don't know what would be right in the middle. Would it be 49 and 50? Or would it be 50 and 51? Not sure. Let's take a look up here and see what would be right in the middle here. Well, let's see, right in the middle is, hmm, how could we figure that out? Well, it was the two middle ones, right? 
the two middle ones. Here's the two middle ones. Hmm. It's like the, the median, right, of the middle numbers. So let's see if we could we figure what that is here is if you have four, there's two in the middle. But what are those two? Let's see. Um, well, if we just add up the, any of these pair, one plus four, we get five. So that means that um, it's halfway between, there's four numbers and it's the two and a half score. It's right between the second and the third, the two and a half. So that's pretty weird here. Um, so we have four numbers and it's the two and a half one. So with, with me, I'm thinking it's kind of like one more, it's like 101 uh, is, would be, I think the 50 and 51st, but I don't even think we need that. I think we can get this right here by, um, by doing this, by, by realizing that this, this two, how many groups do we have is half of the numbers added together. Two groups, but we had four numbers. Three groups, but we had six numbers, right? Four groups, and we had eight numbers. Five groups, and we had 10 numbers. So if we have 100 numbers here adding up, we're going to have 50 groups. OK, where did the 50 come from? Again, it's half the number of numbers. How many groups do we have here? When we added up these 10 numbers, we had five groups. It takes two to add up to that 11. So it takes uh, two numbers to add up to what here? 101 is what they're adding up to. So let's check that here again. Where did that come from? Well, look, when we had four numbers, we have two groups. We have six numbers, we have three. The number of groups is half the number of numbers because it takes two numbers in each group. Okay, that's where the 50 came from. It's half the number of numbers. Then where'd the 101 come from? Well, first of all, I can see that they add up to 101 here by grouping them how we usually group them to do this. But I can also see it because Look, this was adding up to four. And what did these numbers add up to? One more than four, five. This is going up to six. And what did these groups add up to? One more than that, seven. Here is adding up to eight. What did these groups add up to? Nine. So when we go up to 100, the groupings are going to add up to 101. So we have 50 groups that add up to 101. So that group out here, must have been, the last group must have been 50 plus 51 because all those groups add up to 101 and we have 50 of them. So there we go. And 50 times 101, let's do that on a calculator. And what we get, and I'll do this right here, uh, 50 times 51 is 2550. And if that number sounds uh, familiar to you, well, let's check it. That's what we got when we took our two patterns for odd and even and added them together. We got 50-50. And that's exactly what we got when we got the pattern for just the consecutive numbers right there, 50-50. Uh, sorry, 25-50 is what we got. 25.50. Oh, sorry. Let's do that again. 50 times 101. Let's check it one more time here. 50 times 101. I didn't multiply the numbers, right numbers together. 50 times 101 is 50.50. There it is. 50. 50.50. 50. 5,050. And is that what we got up here? 5,050 when we added the two together. The even and the odds, the evens were um, 2550 and the odds were 2500. When you add them together, you get 5050. And that's all the consecutive numbers. But here's a pattern to get it automatically like this. OK, does this pattern also work for an odd number of numbers added up? Let's check it. So let's say we have something like 
one plus two plus three, an odd number of numbers added up. Well, what pattern did we come up with here? Well, we came up with, let's see here, we took half the number of numbers added together, right? Here was 10, and then we said half of 10 is five. So how many numbers are we adding together here? We're adding three. Half of three is, okay, half of three is 1.5 or three halves. And then what did we do? We, we multiplied that times, let's see if we can find it here, like this 11, where did it come from? The 11 came from one more than the number of numbers. So one more than the number of numbers here, when you go one plus two plus three, that's one more than that is four. So what is 1.5 times four? You can do it on a calculator if you want, but one times four is four and half of four is two, add them together, you get six. And if you just do one plus two plus three, you get six. So this is a pattern that always works. If you went from one plus two plus three and went up to, let's say, 47, an odd number of numbers here, the pattern still works. So uh, our number of numbers here is 47. And the pattern that we said is you take half the number of numbers that you have. Well, half of 47 is, if you take 47 divided by two, you get 23.5, okay? Then we multiply that by the number of numbers that we have plus one, right? That's why this was 11, and that's why this was 101, and so on. If you look up there, that was the pattern. So the number of numbers plus one is 48. So uh, this would be uh, the, the two numbers that we would need to multiply together. 23.5, because that is half of the number of numbers. And then 48, because it's the number of numbers plus one. So if we were adding the numbers up to some unknown number n, then what would be the formula to add up these numbers? The sum of the numbers from one to n is equal to, well, what do we say we do? We take half of the number of numbers. So we would say, well, that's n divided by two. And then we multiply that times the number of numbers that we have, right? Like here's three numbers. And what do we multiply that by? We multiply by one more than that. So it's n plus one. And that's the formula for it from cn the pattern. Here's the first three numbers. The n was three. Okay, so we multiplied half of three, half of three, which is 1.5, times the number of numbers three plus one more. One more than three is four. So that works every single time right there. You can check it with the ones earlier, like adding up the numbers from one to 100. We did half of 100, which is 50, and then 100 plus one, 101. Check it with the earlier ones, like one through eight. What do we do? One through eight, take eight divided by two is four, then eight plus one is nine. And that's where the four and the nine came from. So that's a pattern that you can get to solve problems that are very hard, whether they be blocks or whatever. And then the last topic here is division by zero. So I'll go ahead and put that on the same video too. And uh, so division by zero, you may have heard division by zero is undefined. So first of all, when we say divide by zero, we're not meaning zero divided by a number. Okay, that's not the issue here. Like zero divided by five, zero divided by two, zero divided by one. No issue with these because zero divided by a number always equals zero. It equals zero. Zero divided by two is zero. Zero divided by one is, is zero. So, 
and we can show that zero divided by one equals zero because zero times one equals zero. You can show the same thing, zero divided by two equals zero. See, how do we know that, that eight divided by four is two? We know eight divided by four is two because two times four equals eight. We know that zero divided by one is zero because zero times one equals zero. And the same is true if you do zero divided by two. Zero divided by two equals zero because zero times two equals zero. That's not the issue here. The issue is division by zero. So here's what we're talking about. Five divided by zero, four divided by zero, three divided by zero, any number divided by zero. So why is one divided by zero? Let's take that example. Why is one divided by zero undefined? And again, we can determine why it's undefined if we know that you can check division by doing multipl multiplication, just like you can check subtraction by doing, uh, by doing addition. So eight divided by four equals two because two times four equals eight. We can do the same thing with one divided by zero. So we don't know, let's say we don't know what one divided by zero is. It's undefined, but let's say we don't know. So we'll just call that one divided by zero, some unknown. Like in elementary school, they use either like a question mark or they use an N and then later people use an X, it doesn't matter. But we don't know what one divided by zero is. So we're gonna say that's some unknown value like X. So how do we check division? We check division by multiplication. So here eight divided by four is two because two times four equals eight. So um, one divided by zero equals some unknown number x so we can rewrite this as saying x times zero equals one make sure you see what's going on here see eight divided by four equals two one divided by zero equals x we can check that eight divided by four equals two because two times four equals eight we can check what one divided by zero equals x because x times zero has to equal one so this is checking that division and checking that division, we say x times zero equals one. Well, what times zero equals one? No number times zero equals one because any number times zero equals zero. So this one divided by zero is undefined because there's no solution for it. Any number times zero equals zero. But the only way that's gonna work is if some number times zero would equal one. And the same th thing is true if we had two divided by zero. If you said two divided by zero equals some number, it won't equal any number because uh, cross multiplying here, just multiplying by checking your division, x times zero does not equal two. Any number times zero equals zero. So I should actually replace this with it doesn't equal. Let me put a not equal to sign in there. It does not equal two. Okay, so like, for example, if you thought two divided by zero equals zero, it doesn't. Why? Because do the cross multiplying here. Zero times zero doesn't equal two. So that's what I call case number one, which is division by zero and the top number not being a zero. It's a non-zero divided by zero, like a positive number divided by zero. Now. Um, case two is a really weird one. What happens if we have zero divided by zero? So you might think that zero divided by zero equals one. It doesn't. But here's the, here's the thought that you may have. Well, any number divided by itself is one, like five over five, four over four, three over three, two over two, one over one are all one. So shouldn't zero over zero equal one? Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? You also may, may remember, we just talked about this at the start of this zero stuff, that zero divided by any number is zero. Right up here, right up here when we started off, zero divided by five, zero divided by one, all those are zero, okay? Zero divided by a number. So you might say, okay, so um, zero divided by five, zero divided by four, zero by one, all of them are zero. So shouldn't zero divided by zero equal zero? Well, we can check these by multiplying. Does zero over zero equal one? If you cross multiply, you get one times zero equals zero. That's a true statement. What about zero over zero equal zero? Well, again, cross multiply and you get zero times zero equals zero. So it seems like both it equals one and it equals 
zero, but it really can equal anything. Like zero divided by zero could be two. Just do your cross multiplying and you say two times zero equals zero. That's a true statement. Zero by zero, zero divided by zero can be anything because anything times zero equals zero. So that's why zero divided by zero is undefined. It's not because there's no solution for it. It's because there's an infinite amount of solutions to zero divided by zero. So um, I'm gonna look at cases, look at examples of case one. And so here is looking at what happens as we get close, closer to division by zero. So I'm going to look at this expression, 1 over x, as the numbers I substitute in for x get close to 0. So now as I'm not, I know that division by 0, when you have a non-zero number divided by 0, it's undefined. But what does that, what's really happening? What, what, why is it getting to be undefined? So what I'm going to do is put in numbers that get closer and closer to 0 in for x, and then seeing what the value of the expression is. So if I put one in for x, I get one over one, which is one. I'm gonna get closer and closer to zero. If I put a half in there for x or 0.5, one divided by 0.5, and you can use do that on a calculator if you want to, and you get two. Let's get closer to zero. Let's try 0.1. If I do one divided by 0.1, I get 10. If I put in a number closer to zero, like 0 0.01, one divided by 0 0.01 is 100. If I get really close to zero, like 0 0.001, and I substitute that in, one divided by 0 0.001, or 1 1,000th, one divided by 1 1,000th is 1,000. So what's going on here is as the values that I substitute in for x, just the denominator, get very, very small, that makes that value of the whole fraction, one divided by that small number, is a very large number. So what's going on with this? It's going getting larger and larger and larger off to infinity on that. And that's what happens as you get close to a division by zero place like this. Now, this expression is like case two where you have a zero over zero type of thing. So what happens if I get close to three? Well, first of all, what happens when I'm at exactly three on this expression. Well, if I substitute three into this, that'd be three squared minus nine over three minus th three. Well, that gives me nine minus nine, which is zero, over three minus three, which is zero, and zero over zero, again, is undefined. So it means it could be anything, right? Zero over zero could be anything here. So see at the top, we knew it was undefined. It's actually going off to infinity. But here it could be anything, as we get close to it. So instead of putting in three into this, which gives me zero over zero, I substituted in a number close to three. I put in two. And if I put two in for X, that'd be two squared minus nine over two minus three. And you do the arithmetic here, you'll get negative five over negative one, which is five. That's one number less than uh, three. Three is the bad spot, right? Three is the spot that it got zero over zero. That's why I'm saying what happens as we get close to that, because that's that division by zero, zero over zero area. So let's try the other side of three. Let's try four. If I put four in, four squared minus nine over four minus three gives me, that'd be 16 minus nine is seven, and four minus three is one, and seven over one is seven. So now if we look at this a second, when we put in four, we got seven. When we put in two, we got five. And when we put in three, we got undefined. That doesn't seem right, does it? It seems maybe that it should be somewhere between five and seven. So what I did here was put in a number closer to three, just a little bit less than three. See, three is the problem area. What happens as we get close to three? So I put in 2.9. So I just did this on a calculator. And I got, see, I did 2.9 squared minus nine over 2.9 minus three. And if I work that out, I get 5.9. And if I go on the other side of three, just one tenth higher, and I substitute in 3.1, and I work that out, I get 6.1. So you could get closer and closer on this, but I think that after a while, you would realize that as we get close to three, even though this expression, when you substitute three in, gives you what? undefined, as we get closer to three, 
the value of, exp of the expression is getting close to six. And that's what's actually happening on this. And that's a, 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 you know just an example of where this division by zero uh, gets into some weird stuff. So if you just have a non-zero number divided by zero, it's undefined. And actually, in terms of the graph, the numbers get larger and larger as your denominator gets closer and closer to zero. So they get, they, it's said to be heading off to infinity. See, larger and larger numbers. But if you have zero over zero, it could be anything. So you have to put in numbers closer and closer to it. I recommend trying both sides of it to see what it gets close to. So like if we had, if it says what happens to an expression as it gets close to five, I might try six and seven. Okay, substitute six in and seven in and see where it is. Then if you don't have an idea of what it's getting close to, you could try closer to five, like 4.9 and 5.1 and see what those values are getting close to. Because probably if you substitute in five, you'll get zero over zero. Now that's not this expression. If you substitute five in here, there's no issue with it. Five squared minus nine over five minus three, you'll get a value. It's not nothing to do with zero. So you don't have to worry about it, it it's fine. But if you do get the zero over zero, that's where you have to check it close to that value, okay? So I'll stop that right there. I know this is pretty hard stuff, especially this very last problem that we did. But it does give a lot of work with basic math, and it also ties a basic concept of getting close to a number. See, we didn't, we substituted in three and it was trouble, but then we got close to three on both sides. We tried one below, one above. Then we tried a tenth below and a tenth above. And by doing that, we're narrowing in on what that value truly is. And uh, that's, that's a good thing to do here on this problem. So I'll stop right there and uh, I'll put this video up and hopefully that will help you with any uh, homework problems that you have.